Hi, Dr. Jim Fox here. As a reminder, these videos are made in support of Dr. Stanley Pogro's Authentic Textbook Series. Links to these books, as well as the data set that will be used in this video, can be found in the description below. Just click on More. As a way of introduction, I want to provide some context to this data set. It's from a community college in California, and if you recall from video 5, I discussed AB705. This was a bill whose goal was to solve the biggest systemic dropout problem in American education. Here's the issue. Students coming into the community college were testing low in math. They were placed in developmental courses, and the problem was these developmental courses typically resulted in dropouts especially in the area of math. So if you recall since from video 5, since the goal of AB 705 was to increase racial equity and outcomes in community college courses, our previous research question was, what's the overall degree of student success generally and by race? We were looking at a continuous variable of GPA. In this video, we're going to be looking at a different variable, a variable that the data set calls success index. And here's how it was operationalized. The question simply was, did the student pass the math course? Yes or no. So therefore, success index was operationalized or measured using a categorical yes or no. And it can also be referred to as a dichotomous variable because there's only two choices, yes or no. So in video six, we're going to be looking at four individual research questions. The, the first three, actually the first one, is an overall question. Were the students successful in passing math? And then in questions two and three, we're going to be looking at two different demographic type of questions, racial category, you know, passing math by racial category, and then passing math courses by generation status. The fourth one, we're going to change our focus and really look at all of the math courses to see if some were more prone to have lower numbers of passing students. So again, our focus is going to be on math, which typically has had the highest failure rates in these developmental courses. So let's go ahead and jump into our data analysis and answer our first research question. As you recall, I said we're going to be focusing on success index, and the question is simply, did the student pass the math course? This whole data set is just, just math courses. So the N means no, they did not pass, and Y means that they did pass. You can also see that on the data elements uh, worksheet. So we already know how to create a pivot table. All we have to do is go up to Insert, and then click Pivot Table, and then click OK. And immediately it brings our pivot table fields in. I scroll down, look for the success index, and because it's a categorical variable, yes or no, a dichotomous variable, all I have to do is click one time, and it will automatically bring it into the rows because it's a dichotomous variable or categorical. Then all I have to do is drag the success index down to the values to get the counts. So let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see and work with our data. The next thing that we want to do is we want to see, it's easier to see percentages or a, a proportion of passing and failing. So all we have to do is drag that success index right down to the values box again. It's going to bring up the counts, but this time we want to click the little down arrow and click value fields settings. So here it is right here. And we want to change this column view. We want it to calculate by percentages. So if you take a look at show values as, and then the drop down is percent of column total. If I click on that and then click OK, it gives us the percentages. So let's make this pivot table look a little bit nicer. So we're going to shrink up the columns here. We're going to call this count, this percentage. We're going to change our in to uh, failed 
and our y to past. The next thing we want to do is we want to center this so that it looks nice. Let's get rid of these uh, decimals. Let's bring it down to uh, just, there we go. Now, here is our, here's our, here's our data. And this is, this is when we interpret now. We think about the context. Our research question, let me go ahead and grab that. I have that, all of them on a worksheet. Copy and bring it over here. And we'll paste that in a little bit big. So let's shrink that down a little bit. And we'll also change this to RQ1 right while we're at it. Okay, now let's do our, some interpretation. We think about the context of this data set. These are students who typically would have most likely been in developmental courses and dropped out. Instead, they were enrolled into the regular math courses. And what we see here is that 64% of these students did pass. I would say research question one overall, were students successful in passing math courses? I would say, yeah, this is, this is pretty good news. Okay, now it's your turn. I'm going to go ahead and leave, leave this up on the screen, but I'd like for you to pause the video and recreate this, this initial research question one pivot table. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can recreate this. Okay, it's time to move on to research question two. How successful were students in passing math courses by racial category? This time we have two variables. So we're going to have to put one variable in rows and the other in columns. Aesthetically, we typically have the variable that has multiple categories or more categories in the rows and the variables that have fewer categories in the columns. So in this case, the math, the six, the success index with two possible options will be in the columns and the ethnicity uh, descriptions will be in the rows. So let's jump right into it. Let's go over to our data. We're going to be using ethnicity description as well as the success index variable that we already looked at in research question one. So to create the pivot table, we know how to do this. Go up to insert, click pivot table and click OK. Here's our pivot table. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm also going to go over to our worksheet that has all of the research questions on it and copy and then bring it over here and paste. Again, I'm going to have to, it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so that you can see it better. And I'm also going to change sheet three to RQ. Two. So this is our research question two. Click anywhere inside the pivot table and we already said we're going to put our ethnicity description in the rows and since it's categorical data it's automatically by default going to go right to the rows. The other thing that we want to take a look at and I know you know we know about this data set doesn't have a ton of data per ethnic category or um, yeah, so let's let's pull this ethnic category down to the values to see the counts. Yes, right here. So there's a number of of ethnic categories in this data set that we're going to have to not take a look at. Um, it can it can be it can show us uh, invalid results if you have very few uh, you know a very small number. So we can go right to this row label, this drop down menu. And let's get rid of the ones that have very few in them. And what we're left with are four ethnic description categories. The other thing that we want to do is take a look at success index. And so let's scroll down to success index. If I clicked on this and it were it was continuous data, then it would automatically go down to the values, but it's not. It's dichotomous. It's categorical. So when I, I, what I need to do is click and drag it actually to the columns, right? So we want to have the, the nose that is failed and Y is passed. 
And just like in research question one, it's much easier to interpret the data if we include percentages per category or per uh, variable on math success. So let's we're going to drag this math success down to which box? Yep, that's right, values. And it simply repeated it, but we're going to click on this little drop down arrow because we want to see this. Oops, excuse me. We're going to click on value field settings and we want to show this data, show values as percentages. Now, in this case, we want to see the percentages of each ethnic category. So what we're going to do is click percentage of row totals. Okay, and then click OK. So here is our data. It's pretty spread out. Unlike research question one, because we have multiple columns here, it, it provides a grand total. And this information really isn't too helpful for us. We could try to right click and delete it, but it's going to say, wait a minute, this is a part of a pivot table. But the other better option would be to simply hide it. So we're going to hide that data. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to change the, uh, the columns names to n for count and then the the uh, percentages to there we go and when we change that for one it's going to change it for the others as well and then we also want to and this is all a part of kind of making the uh, the data set look visually appealing the other thing that we want to do, or I like to do, is center the data, leave the totals, column totals, just where they are. And then one final thing on this before we interpret the data, the N is, in this case, is the success index, and which is actually, they failed. They failed the math course. And Y, in this case, is that they passed. And one final thing I like to do when we're looking at this type of, we have two different columns under this field, but I'd like to add some, some color to this. So maybe let's do this as kind of like a yellow ish, and then we'll do the past as something in a green. So we can see clearly the, uh, the different columns that we're working with. We only really need to work in two of the columns and not the other two because, for example, let's go ahead and change these percentages also right while we're here. Um, they're simply, they, they simply say the same thing, but one looks at the failed, the other one looks at the past. So 13 and 87, that's 100%, obviously, 43, 57. So let's just, let's interpret the past here. Okay, so here's our data. And we're going to we're going to take a second look at our research question. How successful were students in passing math courses by racial category? Our overall percentage was 65 for these four categories. If you remember from research question one, it was 64 percent, but we had to take a take some of the categories out because of the small sample size. So in for these four, there were 65 percent that passed. And if you take a close look at this data, 87%, 71%, and 81%, three of the categories are clearly above the average. There's only one that actually fell a little bit below that average, and it's this Hispanic category. So this overall, how successful were students in passing math courses by racial category? Again, very successful. However, if additional supports were to be provided, it, looking at this type of data from the racial category, we would provide some additional supports for the Hispanic group. Okay, now it's your turn. Go ahead and, and pause the video and try to recreate this pivot table. Go ahead, pause the video, and then we'll move on to research question three. It's time to move on to research question three. And if you take a close look at research question two and three, they are essentially the same question, but with just a different variable. So our research question two was looking at per racial category. 
Research question through three simply swaps out racial category for generation status. So we're going to take a shortcut here. Let's let's take a quick peek at the data set. And the generation status is and take a peek. So it's first generation, not first generation, and unreported. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Okay, so we know how to create a pivot table. We would go up to insert and then pivot table, but let's take a shortcut. Let's take a look at research question two again. And I'm going to go right up to the top here and actually copy this whole pivot table, actually copy the whole worksheet. And we do that by clicking right there and copy. And I'm going to create a new worksheet by clicking on that little plus. And I'm going to click on the same area right up there at the top left and then do paste. So essentially what we've done is we've, we've simply copied the, um, the pivot table. Everything is here from research question two. But let's take out the question. Let's go down and get our research question here. Question three. Copy that and put this back up here. The other thing I want to do, I want to change this worksheet name to RQ3. And now, just like we said before, all we have to do is go to that first generation uh, status. And instead of the ethnicity description, we're going to drag it right down here. And obviously we could take a look at, at ethnicity per category here, but let's just stick to research question three and drag the ethnicity description out of the way. And what we've just done, and let's make this a little bit smaller. We'll make it visually appealing before we start uh, doing the actual interpretation. The other thing that I like to do is center that data and everything else looks good here. Okay, so we have the data. That was real quick. It's very nice. It would be nice for you if you don't, if you're not used to creating pivot tables to actually go through that process just like we did with research question two. But it's also nice to work efficiently. So we simply copied it over, changed this research question up here, and now we have the data in front of us very, very quickly. So let's take a look again. Let's interpret this past. Uh, the success index, they passed the math, math course 64%. Again, that's very, that was just like our research question once. We already knew that. And when we take a look at these categories, okay, there were two that fell below average and then one that uh, was above average. And when you take a look at this, not first generation had a 78% pass rate. That, that's really good considering the context. Remember, considering the context of this data set. And then there were two categories that fell below the average. Obviously, we're always going to see when we're working with averages uh, above above the average and below the average. So that's very typical, but it also helps us to kind of put put things into perspective from a relative uh, sense. So the highest the highest percentage of past in the ones that were below average is the first generation, the unreported 52%. So just slightly over half. And you look at the numbers 11 and 12, Okay, there might be something to this unreported category that we'd want to take us a, a closer look at. With the first generation, we're, we may sort of assume that they might have a little bit lower than the not first generation. So in this case, we'd want to take a look at some additional variables, maybe like ethnicity. So if we drug that down real quickly for this for this first generation, Okay, um, two. So 100% of the Asian first generation failed. Okay, that's a very small sample set. 
So it really looks like the Asian may have, have brought the percentage down a little bit more because 100% of them um, failed. Okay, so it gives us a little bit more perspective. Maybe there's other, other variables that we'd want to take a look at in this uh, generation uh, with this question. How successful were students in passing math courses by generation status? Well, it was probably pretty typical to what we may have expected. Again, the not first generation, 78%. That's very good. The other two categories of first generation and unreported did a little bit worse. Okay, now it's your turn to recreate this pivot table. If you're not used to creating pivot tables, I, I want to encourage you to go ahead, go through the whole process again, formatting and so forth. But if you already have it down, just do exactly what I did and copy from research question two and create a new worksheet, bring it in and just swap out the variables. That should be much quicker for you. Go ahead, pause the video. We're now moving on to our fourth and final research question. In research, we often collect data on people. However, we can also collect data on things. And that's what we're doing in this case. We're changing the unit of analysis for research question one, two, and three from people, students, to question number four, things. We're changing it to math courses. So were some math courses more prone to have lower numbers of passing students? Sometimes, as educational leaders, we may want to take a closer look at what courses have higher or lower pass rates, and that's exactly what we're doing with research question four. So let's take a look at our data set, and we'll take a look at which particular variables we're going to be looking at. Here are the course titles of math, and I went ahead and, and sorted them in, in uh, ascending order. One of the things that I'll uh, make you aware of is that I created a new variable. I simply added a new column, so insert new column, and then I looked at this, this, um, this variable, and there were some like analytical trigonometry, that only had one student in the course for whatever reason. Not sure exactly why, but that's just what we, that's, that's the data set that we have. Also applied calculus to, again, one student. So I added this variable, including course analysis. And for courses that had multiple students, I said, yes. Okay, the courses that had only a few students in them, I actually said, no, we're not going to actually take a look at these courses because there are, there are just, they're just small sample sizes. So I'll make you aware of that. So let's go ahead and create that pivot table. We know how to do this. Insert, pivot table, okay. Just like before, we'll make this a little bit bigger. And th this time we're taking a look at course title. There it is right here. It's a categorical variable, so we'll click on that and automatically it will go to the rows. Now, we could do this. We could take course title and drop it down into the values, have the counts, and just like we did with the two previous research questions, we filtered this way. But I'm just showing a, a little bit different way uh, to actually use the filter box here in the pivot table fields by using that, by creating that additional uh, variable, including course analysis. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Let me go ahead and click that down into the filters. We'll go up here, click the little down arrow, select multiple items, and then we'll uncheck the no. So including course analysis, no, don't include, include the ones that have very few. So this is what we're left with. This is the data that we're going to be taking a look at. Now, let's go get that success index of passing versus failing students. And this time, again, we're going to bring it down into our columns. Just like before, we're also going to take a look at percentages. So we're going to click grab the success index, 
bring it down to the values and like we've done in the past we're going to click on the little down arrow value field settings this should all be be very familiar by now show values as which one yeah percentage of row total and then click OK so now all we have to do is uh, tidy up our pivot table to make it look visually appealing so just like the others we're going to go ahead and hide these grand total um, columns we're going to change the change the counts to n and this column to percentage we're also going to change the n here which is the success index to failed and change this one to passed the other thing that we're going to do is I'll go ahead and tighten up the columns a little bit to make them a little bit easier to see and then we're going to center oops, center this data and also reduce our decimals just like before and we could do the field here change the color like we did before and the past again like we did before as well so here is our data to interpret 63% that's very close to our 64% from research question one but we did take some classes out so for this data set for these one two three four five six courses that were most populated 63% pass rate so we knew that was we knew it was going to be around that number and when we take a take a close look 63% take a look at these numbers 62 64 57 is a little bit lower 60 64 and then a hundred percent of the analytic geometry slash calculus 2 13 students actually all of them passed like I said before we always are going to have if we're working with an average it's a point estimate and it's going to be drawing uh, data from from the whole data set so we're going to have some below and some above in this case 62 percent is below 57 percent is below 60 percent is below so three of them were below by just a little bit so when we take a look at our research question let me go down here to the research questions grab that question copy and then bring it over into our where our data set is right while we're here we'll change that to rq4 as well so were some math courses more prone to have lower numbers of passing students and the answer to that question really is not really they're all pretty much around that you know closely clustered around that average so that's our four questions so now it's your turn time to pause the video and recreate this pivot table go ahead pause the video I want to close this video with a recap or summary of what we've learned back in video 5 introduced you to pivot tables and we were looking at GPAs continuous data in this video we were looking at categorical variable a categorical variable specifically a dichotomous variable that only had two options success index and it was either a yes or a no the student did pass or didn't pass and in video five I continue to stress the necessity for having very clear research questions as you go into your data analysis and so let me shrink this out of the way we asked those very specific questions overall were students successful in passing math courses how successful were students in passing math courses by racial category how successful were students in passing math courses by generation status and then we close by looking at math courses and if there were any courses that were prone to have lower numbers so we did all all every single one of these four questions with the focus variable being a dichotomous variable simply a yes or no that's that's pretty cool hopefully this video has been helpful to you and now with video 5 and video 6 
you know how to navigate pivot tables in an awesome way. Blessings. Thank you.